Hi, I'm Asif Farouk and this is Finextra Cybos. We're here today with Bob McKay of Acuity. Thank you for joining us. So my first question is regulatory compliance as of course has been a really big talking point of this year Cybos. How do you think regulation is having an impact on the industry? Quite profoundly actually. Uh, there's at least three themes that we've heard uh, at Cybos this year uh, in the area of regulatory compliance. Uh, first uh, as the SEPA end date nears, we're now down to 150 days, uh, there's certainly lots of focus on making sure that not only banks but their corporate customers are SEPA ready. Uh, this has required banks to really help uh, their partner uh, ship with corporations to examine the systems in which these payment details are stored to see if these B bands can be converted into I bands with BIC, uh, to see at what point the messages that corporates send to their banking partners uh, are converted to the new XML formats, and more broadly whether mandates need to be exchanged to enable the debiting uh, of these corporates with uh, their customer base. A second thing we've heard as sanctions has certainly uh, gotten a lot of focus this show uh, is the attention it draws not only on the FIN messages that uh, are certainly of importance, but all of the other sides of uh, the financial products that banks bring to the market. And with the resurgency of trade products, particularly, um, I think there's a renewed interest in examining how complicated that might be for banks as they underwrite uh, these mechanisms or supply letters of credit and other financial products to both the ship side and receive side uh, to better understand the vessels that are participating in the shipment of these goods as well as the nature of the goods that are in the cargo uh, as there's been uh, scrutiny applied on dual uh, purpose goods that uh, sent to the wrong countries might actually find themselves being used for nefarious purposes. Finally, um, certainly correspondent chains play a heavy role at Cybos and there is heightened attention being played uh, as banks look at how they perform diligence on their financial counterparties and uh, certainly there is a need to understand the uh, profound uh, levels of data involved with understanding the ultimate beneficial owners of these banking organizations. Uh, how financially sound these organizations are and what operational impacts uh, these relationships might have not only in transaction processing uh, but in liquidity and sustainability. And how do you think new and incoming regulation affects the UAE compared to other markets like the UK and the US? The, UA the UAE is, in, in fact, the, all of the Gulf region uh, has a unique challenge in that uh, while being a trading partner and a financial service hub for many Western-based banks, they also service the needs of their regional bank uh, partners throughout the world. And uh, many of these uh, banking organizations have participation in some sanctioned countries, and there's nothing that prevents them necessarily doing it. So I think the Gulf state banks have that delicate balance of playing their needs against servicing their regional uh, bank uh, neighbors as well as their Western participants. Um, further still, I think it, 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 it introduces some sort of complexities in terms of also the transparency that doing business with Western banks require in terms of really understanding the un uh, ultimate beneficial ownerships. And I think finally uh, there's uh, certainly a, quite a bit of scrutiny being placed by Western banks to understand, if you will, the correspondent of my correspondent. So as banks start to look for what they call nested accounts, can they be certain that whilst my payment flow has been vetted and deemed clean from a regulatory perspective, is it inherently going to a correspondent who subsequently has a relationship that puts into suspect because it's uh, unsavory? And lastly, what challenges are emerging markets faced with? From a compliance uh, discipline, I think emerging markets introduce additional levels of complexity, especially when you consider the numbers of systems that manage accounts, that conduct transactions, especially in the local clearing, 
where these systems have been created and the records are managed in non-Roman characters. Quite often these uh, regulatory sanctions lists and the uh, well-practiced engines to screen have all been engineered to have an expectation of, of encountering Roman characters. It introduces uh, quite considerable hurdles when you think that these databases uh, and transaction flows need to uh, account for screening Cyrillic or Mandarin or other non-Roman based letters.